Allison here. I'm one of the sisters who writes blogs on real sister stuff, which if you've seen any of our videos already, I'm sure you know that. If you have not already, check out our blog. And uh, I want to show you today how to make my einkorn French bread. Now it's uh, already written out in blog form. Um, I have the whole recipe written out, so I will link that in the description below if you want to read it and get the you know measurements and read all the notes and whatnot um but i'm going to be showing you how to make it today in a video um and so if you don't know what einkorn flour is essentially it's an ancient grain which just means that it's been grown this way for hundreds of years and it hasn't been modernized it hasn't been like genetically modified in any way essentially it's really healthy <laughs> so um, and I really like it. My husband really likes it. Um, it is kind of pricey, um, but in my opinion, I think it's definitely worth it um, because our health is always worth it. Um, and uh, most of the time, einkorn flour um, is like hard to work with in a lot of recipes. Um, they take a long time. And so that's why I really like this recipe uh, because it, it doesn't take that long at all. And it really doesn't require that much effort either. And it comes together into this really nice, um, not too dense, airy, just very nice, tasty bread. It's very tasty. And that's what I like about einkorn flour as well. Um, it has a very nutty and sweet taste as opposed to just like white flour and even wheat flour, which, you know, you need to add something to it. It it's, doesn't have that much taste as like einkorn flour, basically. So einkorn flour is a bomb. <laughs> I really like it. And so we're going to be making some bread with it today. So let's get started. Okay, so for this recipe, we're gonna need about three cups of einkorn flour. Um, and this is using whole grain einkorn flour. Um, so keep that in mind. So three cups we're gonna add to a bowl. And then you're going to need one and a half teaspoons, approximately, of salt. And you can adjust this according to your liking. Um, my husband and I like it a little bit salty. Adds a lot of flavor. <laughs> Excuse me, there's a motorcycle in the back, background. Um, but you can totally adjust it according to how you want it. And then we're also going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Or any oil that you want. And I never measure. That's probably not close to two tablespoons, but I'm finished with the bottle and I'm not going to open up another one. So there you go. <laughs> As you can see, I rarely measure anything. And then you're going to add one packet of active dry yeast. You can proof it if you want. And I have all the proofing instructions in the written um, blog. But uh, I usually don't proof it just because that's one extra step and if it's not proofed I'm not throwing the yeast out anyway and I will just be making flatbread so it really doesn't matter <laughs> um, and I also like to add some coconut flour occasionally um, and this helps to absorb any extra moisture so you don't need to add as much einkorn flour it's totally optional um, you can't taste it or anything it just is there to absorb the water. And I usually use about a tablespoon or two. Um, it's not a big deal. And meanwhile, our water is heating up to about 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I'll get back to you when it's done. Okay, so our water is heated up and we're just going to add that to the bowl. And. Uh, I'll do the best I can while filming. <laughs> just getting used to this. Try not to spill it everywhere. We're just gonna dump that in. Usually I try to trickle it in a bit more, but I'm trying to steady the camera at the same time, so this will have to do. And you're just want, gonna wanna mix this up um, until all the flour is incorporated. And uh, you may have to add a little bit more flour um, einkorn flour 
typically is, is typically very sticky, so we want to make this as easy as possible. Um, but uh, usually I try to avoid adding too much flour. All right. Okay, so once it kind of looks like this, we're basically almost all the flour is incorporated and it's turned into this like co cohesive dough that's kind of sticky. Um, you're gonna leave it in the bowl uh, for about 15 minutes and this just helps the flour absorb more of the water. So we're gonna cover this up and leave it there for 15 minutes. And I'll get back to you when it's done. Um, while my dough is resting for 15 minutes, I wanted to have a quick little commercial break and uh, show you the type of salt we use. Um, we use Redmond's Real Salt. And in this day and age, salt seems to get a bad rep and people think it's not good for you. When in reality, most of the time, they're just not eating real salt. So that's what all three of us here, myself, Mary, and Whitney, um, we all use this salt and it's, it's like the best. I mean, it is real salt. <laughs> as the name states um, and it's definitely worth it and it has tremendous health benefits um, and it's not like you know in the crap you find at the store uh, this is a quality salt and we all highly recommend it so don't just stop using salt instead buy real salt and use that all right so it's been 15 minutes now and this is kind of what you're looking for it's definitely a wetter dough um, so you can add some flour if it's a little too sticky for you, um, but I like it um, like this. I think it adds a really nice texture, and it definitely is not too dry, which is what we want. Um, the final product is light and airy and uh, really yummy. So what we're going to do now after the 15 minutes is take our dough out of the bowl and plop it onto a floured surface and try to get as much of the dough out of the bowl as possible um, and I like to just reuse the same bowl let me grab some flour <laughs> and einkorn flour is a uh, or einkorn dough is a pretty sticky flour in general so keep that in mind um, so what you're gonna do now is we're just going to kind of fold it um, you don't really want to knead the spread too much you can very lightly um, but einkorn flour doesn't have a very strong gluten um, so I like to just fold it. Let me move this more into the frame. <laughs> That's good. And I, so I like to just fold it. Um, and you can see the pictures in the blog post. But you essentially just want to fold it like that. Um, then go to the next side. Do the same thing. This just kind of works that gluten. Kind of pull it and fold it. Do the same thing. Um, and sometimes I do more. Sometimes this is just kind of sufficient. And I've kneaded it before too. Oh, gently. And it's it's fine. You just want to make sure you don't over knead this. Because it's very easy to. And it, it just doesn't knead very good in general. So as I can. Or as you can tell. Um, when you're folding this. It starts to get a little bit more stretchy. Or like. Like a stronger I guess and more tough <laughs> so that's kind of what we're looking for so you just oops spilled some flour I have to clean that up and uh, once it gets to that stage you kind of just want to shape it into a into a ball and I kind of do this and then uh, you can like you can kind of do this if you want but this thing like needs hardly any kneading so that's like about it um, may just you know very gently go at it um, but really there's not much to it. Then you shape this into a ball and kind of do this motion. <laughs> so it really tucks it under there. And then uh, you're going to put it back into your now oiled bowl. Kind of coat that in oil. And you're going to cover this and let it sit here for about an hour and a half. Um, and now einkorn flour will not fully double. You want it to get till it's about 20 to 30% higher than this. And you'll see a lot of bubbles and whatnot. Um, but it will not double in size. So I will get back to you in, in an hour and a half. So now our dough has risen for an hour and a half. And you can see that it's puffed up 
um, but it's not quite doubled in size, and that's exactly what we want. Um, so you can just push it down, you know, kind of release those gases, and you're going to put it on either a floured surface, or if there's enough oil in the bowl, you can also use that. Um, I am doing both. And you're just going to want to <laughs> take it out and uh, flatten it as best as you can into sort of like a rectangle shape. Um, you can flip it around. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can adjust it. Um, and, you know, until it just looks somewhat like that. Um, it doesn't look pretty, but <laughs> it'll taste good when it's done. And then you just want to roll it up into like a log, so like so. And you're just going to keep rolling until you reach the end. And then once you get to the seam side, you're going to kind of pinch those closed. And then you're going to tuck these ends in. So like that. And so it's going to look something like that. And then when you flip it over, it's going to look somewhat decent. And you can kind of like, you know, fix it um, and make it look a little nicer. Maybe flatten it. Um, as best as you can until it looks okay but it you know it doesn't really matter that much and you are going to let this sit on a baking sheet make sure there's either parchment paper or oil or cornmeal or something on here to keep it from sticking and you're going to let it sit here covered for 30 minutes and while you do that, you're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which I believe is like 190 degrees Celsius. But check it out first. Don't don't go don't go on my on my thinking. So you're gonna let this sit for 30 minutes, and in the meantime, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll get back to you when it's done. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes. And it may have puffed up a little bit, and that's fine. That's what we want. Um, and then you're just going to slice uh, three diagonal lines in the dough to give it that, you know, French French bread look. I'm just going to do something like that. Not exactly even, but that's all right. And then we're going to pop this in the oven, and it's going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes um, when it's dark on top. You can put an egg wash on here if you want. I typically don't because that's one extra step that I don't really care about. <laughs> but you can you can do what you want. Um, but 20 to 25 minutes and I'll get back to you when that's done. So this is the finished product. It's uh, very hot right now, but it smells really good and it's light and airy. And this is what it should look like when it's done. All right, thank you very much for watching. And I do wish that you try and make this bread. It is very foolproof. I mean, you don't have to be an experienced baker to make this. Um, and it's moist, it's airy, it's tasty, and it's pretty quick compared to most other breads and einkorn breads out there. So I do hope that you give this recipe a try. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And as always, check out our blog, subscribe if you want to. Um, yeah.